So I am heading to my local Home Depot. I had to take my Jeep um, just because it's covered. I can't take a truck or anything because it's supposed to rain. I don't like the plywood getting all wet. It makes it hard to work with. It starts to mess up the plies and it's supposed to rain really bad. So i got to take the Jeep. I'm just going to have to get it cut down um, on their panel saw that they have there. They really don't ever do a very good job, so I'm gonna have to go back home and then clean it all up with my track saw, but gotta do what I gotta do to keep the plywood dry. Well, as you can tell, I still got super wet. Good thing I didn't drive the truck, because then that plywood would have been even more wet, and look at how bad it got. Ah, I hate rain, and I always seem like I have to go get wood when it rains, every single time. But. Let's get on to this build. All right, now that I got back to my nice, warm, cozy shop, I had to make sure that Home Depot did a decent job on breaking down all this material for me. Now, I hate really, really doing this, but I had no other way to get it home because of course it was raining. And like they say, when it rains, it pours. And that day, it was pouring. So now the majority of this cabinet was made with pocket hole joinery and just recessed screws. Now, I could have used some other kind of fancy joinery, but I mean, it is just a box, so it's really not that important. So here I'm just uh, making sure to stay on top of sanding. For one, it just makes it easier at the very end so you don't have to bump up against the sides and end up ruining it with your orbital sander. And also, who wants to spend just two hours of sanding? I'd rather break it up throughout the day and it just makes it seem like so much less of a task. Now here, I even question myself and why I even do things like that but as you can see I was using that square and that back panel to the bottom which you don't even need that because of the fact of whenever you put your sides on this as long as all your parts are where they need to be and true and square in the first place it's gonna pull that bottom to that back and it's gonna pull that square whenever you do put your side pieces on so just uh, act like I didn't do that part now the next step was to put the sides on and this is the part where it was gonna pull it into square. And I decided to use pocket hole screws because I didn't want any of the plywood edges to be showing because I wasn't gonna put any kind of face frames on the side, I was just gonna do it on the front. And if I would have drilled into the side, I would have had to cover it up with the face frame. So pocket hole screws were the best bet for this. Now another trick that I picked up a couple years ago is if you don't clamp your edges, your screw from the pocket hole will push it out. So what I've, I have always learned is to back out that screw if it's not flush and redo it and it will be perfect. Oh yeah, I guess I should have mentioned. That's my daughter Layla, she's three. She likes to come out in the shop with me, hang out. Um, she really doesn't know it, but I'm really making her an apprentice. Right now she's kind of useless. She don't ever go inside and get me anything to drink. So hopefully one day I can actually teach her and she becomes a foreman and I can just sit back and you know watch her build things. Now here I'm edge banding all my center dividers where the bassets were gonna sit. Now, here, I don't even know why I'm showing you guys this because I'm bad at math and I don't know why I'm showing math, but secretly it was a opening of 60 inches and I used my calculator on my phone because I had to divide that by three. Yeah, I probably could have did that in my head, but no, in my luck, I would have probably ended up with like 19 and 557ths. Um, but yeah. So when I'm shooting in my center dividers, I like to use uh, a mixture of a brad nail gun and then also a gauge block. And to me, what a gauge block is, it's a board that is already cut to the size between the shelves. It just helps you to not have to use a tape measure and rely on that tape measure. I don't like to use a tape measure if I don't have to. And why I do that is because it makes everything nice and tight. So you can shove your shelf up against exactly where it needs to be, as you can see in this shot, is I'm holding that up tight, shooting on with my brad nail, and then coming back and reinforcing it with glue and screws. Now you guys might have to close your eyes for this. It's, it wasn't needed for this video, but 
I wanted to make sure that you guys seen and I wanted to prove to myself and I wanted to prove to OSHA because I felt like they were looking in my window making sure that I was doing the proper lifting procedures and that I was tied off because of the fact of I was one centimeter off the ground because there was sawdust on the ground. Now, didn't have to do that, but I like to do things right. So now I could go ahead and start cutting my slats for the shelf. And I ended up using a three inch wide piece. I played around with two and a quarter and two inches and they just didn't look proportionate for this small of a shelf. Now I also, as you can see, is I used plywood strips. Now I probably could have used solid strips, it probably would have looked a little bit better, but what I did is that first piece that on the shelf is I ran a piece of edge banding so you wouldn't see that it was actually plywood. And you're not gonna be able to see in between each one with a shelf on top that it is plywood and then it saves you a little bit of money too, especially if you already have some plywood on hand. Now the center stretcher right here, it's not doing anything for stability for the top of the bench. All it is for is for the face frame to have something to be able to be glued to. I had to come back and add a center divider. And the reason why I went with a center divider is because these shelves up top were not that tall right on top of the baskets. So I didn't want you to put something back there and then it would get so far back there you wouldn't be able to even see what's under there. So I added that center divider which would help with keeping it from sagging. And then once I put my face frame on the front, it actually made that really, really solid. And then I came back through, sanded off my face frame and put a nice eighth inch round over over everything. And as you can see in these next couple shots, is before I put my face frame on, I rounded over the piece of plywood, which is actually the carcass of this, because you're never gonna be able to line that face frame up, especially if you dive into it. So if you purposely make a line between that, which I call a shadow line, it just makes it look a little bit nicer. And if you do have a gap, it kind of hides it a little better. So here I'm spraying Chem Aqua Plus primer, and I'm gonna be spraying the three coats of top coat. Um, they're both from Sherwin-Williams. It's a really, really good water-based lacquer. It dries in like 15 minutes and you can recoat in 20 something. I don't know the exact amount of time, but that's usually about what I wait and it seems like it's dry enough to go for the final coats. Um, here I just used a custom mix. I was almost out of black and I didn't have very much gray left and I wanted in between. So I ended up uh, mixing the black and the gray and I came out with this really, really cool dark gray color. And I was able to put on my top substrate piece. Um, I just attached it with a little bit of glue and an inch and a quarter screws. And now what this line for here is, I wanted to make a herringbone pattern up top. Um, I wanted it to be different, so I didn't want it to be at, you know, all the way across or at just diving into it at a 90. I ended up doing some weird angle. I don't even know what angle this was. I just set a piece of plywood up top. I traced out the bottom. And now this is where the track saw really, really shines. I was able to just to flip up the piece and cut. So now here, as you can see, as I marked on each side of the line that I used when I traced it, I offset that about a half inch outside. And the reason why I did that is because if I was to mess up somewhere, I had a little bit of room where I was still gonna cover up the bottom substrate piece. As I already mentioned, I wanted to do a herringbone pattern up top. I've seen other woodworkers do this before, but I had no clue how it was supposed to go. So I just did a quick Yahoo search on how I'm supposed to do it. And I was just looking up the patterns and it almost seemed like it was a lot more complex than what it was. But once you actually kind of dumb it down, it's really just 45 degree angles that are just butted together at that 45 to make almost like a 90. Um, so I was able to cut some three quarter inch plywood strips and the reason why I went with plywood is I didn't want to have to worry about wood movement. I've seen a lot of this herringbone pattern stuff before and people want to enclose it into a border and it always has problems because the wood has to have somewhere to move, especially whenever they're cut into different strips going different ways. You end up going to have a lot of problems with it. So plywood was my best bet. So I had to come back through and I made a centered line. 
and I wanted to go off that center line because I wanted each strip. I knew I was gonna have small little strips on each side and I wanted those to be the same distance on the front and the back and on the sides. So that's the reason why I started with that center line and then I worked my way out. I ended up finishing the front half first and then I came back through and I finished the back. So now if I could give any kind of advice on this as well, don't do what I did. I waited for that center section that I started with and I put paint cans down on it to keep it from moving. I wouldn't recommend doing that because some of the pieces did need to be adjusted and since I already had that center section already glued, it made it almost impossible for me to move any pieces. Thankfully all my measurements and everything lined up so it made it easy. And I was able to of course take my track saw again and clean up to where that herringbone pattern ran over. And I had to do that because where this solid piece of plywood was gonna run into the pattern, um, I wanted a nice clean line so I just ran the track saw up against it and it really did work pretty well. And now here, I probably went a little overboard on trying to get the weight into the center as you can see. I had to use all kinds of random things inside my shop. Um, I could have just used clamps on the outside, but I was kind of worried about it just having a bow or something where the glue wasn't going to come in contact in the center, so I didn't take no chances. And now here in the back, as if you've seen my other videos and my other YouTube videos that I've made, I love the look of just dowels. I didn't need them for anything, I just wanted to dress it up because that other side just with the plywood looked a little boring. And now the way that I covered up the edges was just use these um, little pieces that I ran through my planer uh, about a half inch thick or maybe a little less than that. Um, I just wanted to cover it up and it made it look really good. So now after spending a good amount of time getting it sanded up and getting it cleaned up, it was time to add the dark walnut stain. So whenever I was a kid, I was always told from my mom and dad to never crisscross brown with gray. And now I'm doing that exact opposite and I'm building pieces of furniture and I built a lot of furniture with this color combo. I'm sorry, mom, I still do love you. And I was able to spray on three coats of water-based polyurethane. I like to use the water-based polyurethane because of the fact that it doesn't stink and it also hardens just as well as what an oil-based polyurethane does these days. And before you know it, this project is done. If you guys got any kind of value out of this video, I would really appreciate you guys doing a quick subscribe to my channel. And uh, I hope you guys look forward to seeing more of my videos, which I do have more planned coming up in the future. See you later and uh, stay in that shop.